Hallelujah. 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 I'm very excited today because um, was it the first day, the opening ceremony of the program? I was here and the papa was the one preaching and I was so blessed. I told him the testimony when we got to the office. But I told him I was not too happy he was introducing somebody and he said he loved the person so much. When he came to my turn, he didn't say he loved me so much. So I told him I was very, very jealous that I wasn't too happy. So I'm so happy today that you say you love me so much. Hallelujah! Thank you, sir. You don't know how much I love you. You don't know how much I appreciate you. You don't know how much I cherish you. There are great things that only eternity will tell of what you have done in this land. Hallelujah. I remember a few years back, I was given the opportunity to minister to the to the pastors that were to be ordained. And um, I participated in that training to train the pastors. And um, I said something in the course of my speaking that day. I said that I appreciate you so much because you are a kingdom man. There are church people and they are kingdom people. And you are not a church man. You are a kingdom man. And uh, I thank God for the guest speaker who has just finished speaking. He said this church, he said it's not a church, it's a movement. And there is a, there is a, a vast difference between a church and a movement. A movement transcends whatever any church can ever accomplish. And this is a movement. It's a movement that is going to invade Africa. It's a movement that is going to give hope to the hopeless in Africa. And the time is now. Turn to somebody, look at the person and say, the time is now. Hallelujah. So I'm blessed. Thank you, sir, for the privilege and the honor to give me the opportunity to share with the people of God in this great, great, great meeting. Praise the name of the Lord. I do not have time. I came with minister friends who have been praying alongside with me. And I want to recognize their presence because they did something very unique for me yesterday. They came to my office to spend time and pray with me for this program. Can, can you please lift up your hand wherever you are, those ministers, friends. God bless you. God bless you. And they specifically come here tonight to honor God's presence in my life. God bless you, sir. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Before you sit down, I just want you to begin to steam. What do I say? I want you to steam. I want you to take three minutes and pray in tongues. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, please stand on your feet and begin to boil. And begin to steam and begin to vibrate in tongues. Open your mouth and begin to pray in tongues for at least three minutes. Libro kataba centuriande. Bade no sobra ke kapate glesteriando. Isa praga se ke lubro de mesika toza. Engi so praga la gato ze kragle se de de brando. Ila bada te ke ke praga da sotorianda. Raka palaga se ke to klosteri de brande. Ribada de brabada kato zere. Rabada kato she praka to zende. Ribade to po se kragla bo centuriande. Inga la bralia bo se de branga torianga san. The Galabro Leva Cassandra Laborian de Broliaba Ribata do de Bata do Secraclesenda Inderele Brando Secadabra de Brondo 
Ikaya la la bra la basse, no la la basse, grand lusanda. Ita brando se kaka pragle se ye. Ia la bra la bobo se kala brone busentarianda. Ikaya la 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 brando la basse, kaya de de. Ia la 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 brando se kaka pragle se nda. Ika toria la bra de bose kaya de keto te. Yes, your mana katoje. Karabala gaso koromanze. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for open heaven tonight. Thank you for the ministration of your servant. Thank you for open heaven tonight. I apply the blood of Jesus over the heaven of every man and woman here. And demand that heaven be open over you. That the glory of the Lord descend upon you tonight. That that which God has ordained to accomplish through this program will be accomplished in your life. And no power will hold it back. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. I have been coming to this house. I'm a member of this house. I've been coming to this house very often. And um, I'm not sure that I have actually come with my wife before. And I think my wife is here. I, I came a little bit earlier because I was passionate to partake in the last pro ministration. I was very hungry to partake of it. Otherwise, I would have come with her. Honey, are you here? Oh. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That's my beloved wife. And we've been married for 30 something years. I don't look like it, isn't it? I don't look like it. Okay. My last born is here. He's very tall, far taller than me. Now, if you look at that woman, you will notice that she's taller than me. I was short. And I said to myself, if I marry a short woman, you can imagine the kind of children we will produce. So I said, common sense said, go and marry a tall woman. And she has satisfied my reason of marrying her because she gave me tall children. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Last Sunday was... Um, women convention in our church and she was the one who preached she ministered so well that I almost honestly speaking I was tempted to say if it is needful for your servant to depart in peace now I am ready but I held myself back I said I'm not ready <laughs> it was so powerful when she ministered praise God tonight I want to speak to us on the glory out of the shaking. The glory out of what? The shaking. There is a shaking that is going on right now all over the nations of the earth. And if you look at, as I told you I was here on, on the opening ceremony of these 21 days of festival of glory. I was here and the Papa himself read from the book of Haggai. And I'd like for us to look at it, Haggai chapter 2. We will read from verse 9 to verse 21, and then we'll jump to verse 23. I'm reading it from the Living Bible Translation. In early October, when is tomorrow? This is the way the Living Bible started in early October. And I'm asking you, when is tomorrow? When is tomorrow? Or what is tomorrow? What is tomorrow? October. In early October of the same year, the Lord sent them this message through Haggai. Ask this question of the governor and the high priests. 
and everyone that is left in the land, who among you can remember the temple as it was before? How glorious it was in comparison, it is nothing now, is it? But take courage, O Zerubbabel and Joshua and all the people, take courage and walk. Turn to somebody and say, take courage. Extremely, extremely important at the time in which you will live, you must determine to be courageous. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because the days are becoming much more evil than it has ever been. So he said, take courage. But take courage. That is verse 4. Oh, Zerubbabel and Joshua and all the people that, and all the people take courage, a repetition. For I am with you, says the Lord Almighty. Whenever God said Almighty or I, thou sayest the Lord, he is putting his endorsement, is giving his signature. Amen. Verse 5. For I promise you, for I promise when you left Egypt that my spirit will remain among you. So don't be afraid. For the Lord Almighty says, in just a little while, I will begin to shake the heavens and the earth and the oceans too and the dry land. I will shake all nations and the desires of all nations shall come to this temple. And I will fill this place with my glory, sayeth the Lord. He signed his name. Sayeth the Lord Almighty. The future splendor of this temple will be greater than the splendor of the first one. For I have plenty of silver and gold to do it. And here I will give peace, says the Lord. Verse 21. Tell Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth, to overthrow thro uh, thrones, to destroy strengths of the kingdoms of the nation. I will overthrow their arm, might, and brothers and companions will kill each other. But when that happened, turn to somebody and say, but when that happened. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> now why did the Lord say this? Because the Lord was setting a time. And he wanted the people to know when they ought to act appropriately to match with the situation at the at hand and so the Lord said but when that happened I will take you O Zerubbabel my servant and honor you like a senate ring upon my finger for I will for I have specially chosen you turn to somebody and say God is speaking to you Set on a person by the other side of your hand. God is speaking to you. And what did he say? I have chosen you. What have he said? I have chosen you. What is he saying? I have chosen you. Says the Lord Almighty. The glory out of the shaking. From the message that led the foundation of this program by God's servant. We understand that the temple, two temples were being referred to as a reference point. The first temple was the temple of Solomon. This second temple was the temple that Ezra 
by the help of the prophet, Haggai had to build. And this was the second temple because the Babylonian kingdom or empire has destroyed the first temple because the people of God has despised their God. And by this time, the people have gone into captivity. But very surprising enough, the prophet that rose up to begin to prophesy about the rebuilding of the temple happened, uh, happened to be called Haggai. And the Hebrew word for Haggai means festive. What do I say the Hebrew word for Haggai means? Festive. Or festival if you like. Now what God was saying was that in the midst of pains, in the midst of bondage, in the midst of slavery that the people have gone into, it was going to bring a feast. It was going to bring a celebration. It was going to bring glory. No wonder the man Agai has to fit into the picture to prophesy to strengthen the hands of the people of God to rise up and build. Now something very strange concerning the two temples. The first temple David had to prepare materials in abundance. But David was not allowed by God to build the temple because he was a man of war who has shed so much blood. And God said, hey, you can't build a temple for me. Because the temple has to indicate something. The temple has to reference something. The temple was a pointer to the body of Christ. The temple was a pointer to the church. And it only one blood that will redeem the church. The blood of the Savior. So David, you are disqualified to build the temple. But David made abundance the material that was required for the building of that first temple. Then Solomon was chosen by the Lord to build the temple. And the hearts of the people were willing. But in the second temple, if you read it in chapter 1, Haggai started by saying, how come that you said the time has not come to build the temple of the Lord, but it is time for you to dwell in sealed houses, in good houses, but you have said in your heart, it is not yet time to build the temple of the Lord. Now these two temples picture the church. The church at its inception. The early church that kicks off from the Pentecost. And the second temple picture the church at this very moment. The church at the present time fit perfectly the picture of the second temple. If you look at the lives of believers, if you look at what is happening in the nations of the world, the deceit inside the church, the corruption inside the church, the perverseness inside the church, the deceit inside the church, the lies inside the church. You seem not to picture glory at all. We preach, but our life does not fit into the picture. We answer Christians, but our lives does not fit into the picture. The difference is that in the early church, the people did not answer Christians. Rather, the sinners, the unbelievers, the world around them saw Jesus in their lives, Jesus in their behavior, Jesus, 
in whatever they do, the people saw the power, the signs, the wonders, the miracles of Jesus in their lives. And the people called them Christians, meaning Christ-like. Today, the world are doubting whether we are Christians. Our neighbors are doubting whether we are Christians. Our colleagues in the office are doubting whether we are Christians. Because we choose to answer Christians. But in the early church, they called them Christians. Because they saw the glory of Christ. They saw the life of Christ. They saw the power of Christ in their lives so they were convinced they were persuaded to answer to call them what christians but today we choose to answer christians without obedience with no lives to show with no power to show i want you to know that this time in which we are a divine shaking has already started. It started in 2019. Although it has been building up momentum, but the church, many church people were not aware of what was going on. The Illuminati has already started talking about G5, G network 400 years ago before GSM was manufactured. The Illuminati started talking about 5G network 400 years ago. The Freemason, those who are plotting and scheming and planning for one world government known as the New World Order, have already been plotting and devising and insinuating and conspiring against the church. But the church has been sleeping. But the church at this moment that I'm talking is in a terrible, terrible danger. But the most I God is saying, take courage. It's not too bad. Something is about to break forth. The glory of the latter house shall be greater, shall be greater, shall be greater than the glory of the past. The days ahead, what will happen will be more beautiful than Pentecost. If somebody is not hearing me. There is a movement that is about to start. It's already in progress. The new world order has been plotting and scheming and, and devising. But I, can I shock you? Our God has never been to sleep. He has never gone to sleep. And the Bible says it does not sleep nor slumber. So whatever they are plotting, God cannot be taken by surprise. Are you hearing me? And it might look as though the church is not ready. But God is ready. And God said in the book of Romans that he's going to do a quick walk. And he will cut it short in righteousness. Is somebody hearing me? The church in the early beginning, in the day of Pentecost, was so powerful, so explosive, that the Bible has to tell us in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 19, think verse 12, that God did uncommon miracles, special miracles, which means that miracle in the early church was so common. That there was uncommon one. God did uncommon miracles by the hand of Paul. So that handkerchief that is carried from his body. 
will be taken to far distance and will heal the sick and will cast out demons, handkerchief, apron. Praise the name of the Lord. But the present church doesn't seem to look like that. The present church seems to be at the mercy of the enemy. But I have a good news for you. The church is not at the mercy of Satan. The prayer partners I pray with, the ministers of the gospel that I prayed with, we had 24 hours prayer last Monday, or Monday before last. And uh, I asked them a question in that fasting and prayer. I said, very soon, unless the most high intervene, vaccination is going to be compulsory. And that means that if a church does not take the vaccination, the government may be compelled to shut down the church. As I'm talking now, Australia, is it Australia? Yes, Australia people, are, police are, and army are going from house to house, knocking door to vaccinate people. And if you don't want to be vaccinated, leave Australia. Joe Biden has made it compulsory in America that vaccine is compulsory. Are you not reading? Are you not li listening to what is going on? The wall is at the palm of your hand. In Nigeria, they have already started going from church to church on Sunday morning to vaccine, to vaccinate people. Are you not aware of that? But can I shock you? There's so much, so much lies about the vaccination. So much lies about the COVID-19. So much lie. Singapore are single-handedly defy the World Health Organization protocol. And Singapore has been able to cast carry out post-mortem on COVID-19. Contrary to the World Health Organization protocol on handling this condition. And they discovered that it's not a virus, but a bacteria that can be cured with what is it? With what? With chloroquine and what? Eh? A spring, a spring. It's a bacterial. It's not a virus. But they have been lying to us because they want to change the world. And the target is to kill as many Africa as possible. As I'm talking now, in the next two, three years, mark my word, maybe you will likely call me a false prophet. In the next two, three years, there's going to be massive death. Because it has been proven that those that have received the vaccine are really the problem now. Not those who are not vaccinated. It has been proven beyond every reasonable doubt. And the World Health Organization and other medical scientists have been bribed to lie. So many people are dying that are receiving this vaccine. So many people are dying. But they are suppressing the news. Listen to me. In the next few years, there is going to, people will be slump, slumping on the street and dying. And I asked the pastor, I said, what happened? If they shut down the church, how do I eat? I need to think of myself and my family. And then the second thinking, I said, if, if this second shutdown has not come, many people have already backslided. What about if this second shutdown comes? What will happen to the church? And I was bothered. I was concerned. And of course we spent time and prayed. That night while we were praying. 
I couldn't sleep because when we broke our fast by six o'clock, somebody with a terrible skin disease has just been healed now. If you have any kind of skin condition, God is healing you now. In the name of Jesus. So we broke our fast and we went to sleep and woke up by 10 o'clock to pray till morning. But I couldn't sleep, so I went to the net and start doing research because I research what is happening in the world on a daily basis almost. And the Lord said, drop your phone and lie down on the bed floor. I want to speak to you. And I lay down and I started praying. After about 15 minutes, a bunch of key was dropped into my hand. I saw a vision. I was still praying when my eyes opened and I saw a vision and a bunch of key was dropped into my hand and the Lord said, you've been given the keys to the house of mercy. I did not understand what the Lord said and what he meant. So 15 minutes after I stopped my prayer, pick up my phone and cockle in. Is there any scripture that talk about the house of mercy? John chapter 5, pop up. You can cockle it, you will see it. And what I discover is that the name Bethesda means house of mercy. And you know in John chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. Hello. And often time when Jesus want to heal the sick, the Bible said he is moved with what? Compassion or mercy to heal the sick. So the word Bethesda means house of mercy or flowing water. I still couldn't understand. I said, Lord, do you want me to start a pool of Bethesda? I will not be able to do that though. You will need to speak with clarity and send angel to knock sense into my head before I practice that one. So I keep praying throughout that week. Then the Thursday of that week, the Lord woke me up by 2, by 2 a.m. and said, get to the altar and lie down and pray. And as I was praying, the Lord said, it's simple. The house of mercy is simple. Go tell my people that the church is not at the mercy of the World Health Organization. Go and tell my people that the church is not at the mercy of new one world a new world order. Go and tell my people that the church is not at the mercy of Bill Gates and Fauci and the rest of them. The church is not at the mercy of the enemy. Go and tell my people that in the second that is coming, the glory is about to burst forth. In the second that is coming, the glory is about to burst forth. I don't hear you well. How is the glory going to come? The glory is going to come when you rise up. The glory is going to come when I rise up. The church is the only hope of the world at this moment. Yesterday I was reading something on the net. Many, many doctors are telling people in the western world, don't go to the hospital. Hospital is very dangerous now because of the lie they are telling. Hospital is very, very dangerous now. Don't go to the hospital. So if the people are told not go to go to the hospital, where is the hope of the world? You are the hope of the world. Enough of sitting down and playing church. Enough of becoming lazy in seeking the face of God, in carrying the grace of God, in carrying the glory of God. Enough of looking for who will pray for you when you should be praying for others. Enough of it. The church must rise because this is the season that God is going to glorify himself in the nations of the earth. 
This is the time. This is the moment. This is the day. This is the hour that God is going to beautify his church. Sir, sir, there is no police. The Lord told me no police or army that will stop people from coming to this place. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because the people will carry the solution. In Isaiah chapter 62, is it 62 or 61? Isaiah 61 verse 1. Arise and shine for your light has come. Not that it's going to come. It has already come. The word arise means that you may have been somewhere down. Am I communicating? For somebody to say arise and shine, it means that you have been somewhere down. You have lost hope. You are almost about to throw in the towel. You are discouraged with, the, with, with financial situation in the nation. You are discouraged with the multiple debt that is going on in the nation. You, 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 you seem to be, you seem not to know where to go, where to go. Can I shock you? Some of you think that if you have money, you will have to run to the, to the western world. Can I shock you? The western world will be running to Africa. It's not going to be far. It may not, it may not pass 2021. It may not pass 2021. The western world will begin to come to Africa. You know why? Africa has the answer. Africa is God's plan for the final move. Africa is the light that will shine and darkness will not be able to comprehend. The World Health Organization will not be able to comprehend. The new world order will not be able to comprehend. Can I hear you shout amen? Tonight, I have an assignment from heaven. And we don't have much time. The Bible says, arise and shine. Can we open to that place? Because I don't have time. Can we just open to that place? Isaiah chapter 61. Am I right? Is it 60? God bless you. You are a Bible student. Isaiah chapter 60. Let's read from verse 1. Okay, it's on the screen. Can we just open to that place? Can we all stand while we read this word of the right? Lord? In Is honor to the King of Kings and God the Lord bless of Lords. You. You Want to go. Student. Arise. Chapter shine. For thy light is come, okay, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and cross darkness the people. Arise, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. Turn to somebody and say, His glory shall be seen. Upon thee. upon thee but listen but listen but before his glory will be seen upon you you must make up your mind to arise and shine the glory is already in you I said the glory is in you the Bible say in this mortal body contain the treasure the glory we carry in our body the, this eaten vessel, we carry the treasure. We carry the glory. The Bible says you are complete in Christ. Who is the head of all principalities and powers. You are not about to be completed. You are already complete in Christ. The Bible says you are the light of the world. I hear some pastors including so called prophets. Asking believers to go and receive COVID vaccine. And I said, if they are prophet indeed, they will have seen that this is a lie.
Do you hear what I'm saying? But you must be willing to rise up and shine. And the Lord said, I, I have an assignment in the house. Everyone that is sick, everyone, the Lord showed me some people whom I need to call their case. Uh, there are 20 women that we need to carry their babies by this time next year. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are 20 women that will need to carry their babies next year. By next year, they will, they will have dedicated their baby. By next year, they will be coming to this altar with the evidence of the testimony. And then the Lord said to me, there are people that are having terrible itchings in their body. Some your itching has lasted for as long as two years. And you have taken all kinds of medication and it has not responded to any treatment. Tonight is the end of it. Amen. There are some people that are having terrible problems in their respiratory tract problem. It's not COVID. But even if it is COVID, you will be healed tonight. And then the Lord said, there are people that have been having terrible heat in their body, internal heat. It's like if they are conducting fire service in your body. Tonight, the fire service will leave. I said the fire, the fire service will leave. There are people that are having difficulty with their feet. They cannot walk properly. Tonight you will walk. Yeah. But this is how it's going to happen. I'm not going to be the one to pray. You are the one to pray. So, very quickly because of no time. Very quickly, if you fall under the condition that I have called. Lift up your hand. And please, this, please keep it down. This is what we are going to do. As you lift up your hand. We don't have time. I will line up people here. And then you have never prayed for the sick before in your life and see somebody healed. But tonight you will pray and you will see somebody healed tonight. Yeah. I don't have time to go into that. But what we are going to do is that as the people lift up their hand, not only the sicknesses I have called out, blindness will be healed tonight. Yeah. Deafness will be healed tonight. Dumb tongue will be open tonight. I didn't used to believe that stammering, stammering was a sickness until I preach in your, your branch. Uh, your pastor is not here tonight. Invited me in your branch and I preach. And there was a man whose stammering was bad. And when I said, if you have any kind of condition, God will solve the problem. The man came out eh, 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 and he started stammering so bad. He said, can God heal my condition? At that time, I didn't have a choice than to say yes. And God miraculously healed his stammering. And then I went to a Presbyterian church in Akamba. And I gave the testimony and there was a young girl whose stammering was worse than that of the first one. But this time around, I have seen it so my faith has grown. And she was healed instantly that night. Tonight, if you are stammering, you will be healed. But please look, please wait. You are not going to be healed by my anointing. You are not going to be healed by the anointing of your pastor. You are going to be healed. You are going to be healed by the anointing of your brother around you. Because every one of you born of God, you carry anointing. I say you carry anointing. The only problem is that you don't know it. What you don't know you have, you cannot use it. Do you hear what I'm saying? How many of you believe that God healed the sick? I disappoint you. God is not the one that healed the sick. 
I say God is not the one that healed the sick. The believers are the one that healed the sick. Matthew chapter 10. Before you throw your religious stone on me. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 8. Jesus said. Heal the sick. Cleanse the labor. Raise the dead. Cast out devil. Freely you have received. What do you receive? Power. What do you receive? Power. At chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my proof producer. You shall be my witness. When you are a witness in the court, you produce a proof of the case that you are witnesses about. Am I communicating? Say, I have power. power. It's either you are lying or God is lying. And the Bible said, let every man be a liar. But let God be true. If you are born again, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you have power. Turn to somebody and say, I have power. power. Was Jesus lying when he said to you, this son shall follow them that believe? Are you a believer? I say, are you a believer? He said, you shall lay hand upon the sick and the sick shall recover. Have you been going about laying hand upon the sick? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. You have the power. But until you use what you have, you will not know what you have. Are you hearing me? Tonight, we'll experiment it. We'll know whether God is a liar. We may not have time for testimony tonight. But please, I beg you for testimony tomorrow. Please, if you are sick in any part of your body, you are going to raise up your hand. Three people to one person. Don't lay hand on the head. Lay hand on the shoulder. Hold the hand. Command that. Listen to me. This is how to pray. If you want evidence, if you want to see miracle happen, this is how to pray. As a matter of fact, you don't pray for the sick. It's a wrong ideology to pray for the sick. Can I say this? God give you the power. You dispense the power. I say God give you the power. You do what? You dispense the power. Jesus said, Go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demon. Freely you have received power. Freely you have received healing. Freely you have received anointing to break the yoke, to cast out demon. Freely give it. And then you say, no God, he give it. So you lay hand upon the sick and said, oh God, heal. God said, no, I gave you the power to heal. Why are you calling me to heal? Is somebody here? So Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. So Peter had something beyond silver and gold. Such as I have, I do what? I give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Can I shock you very quickly? There are two ways the name of Jesus is used. One, the name of Jesus is used to approach the Father. As a child of God for your need. Secondly, the name of Jesus is used to carry out a transaction on behalf of Jesus. In John chapter 16, from verse 23, Jesus said, Until now you have asked the Father nothing in my name, but you shall ask that you may receive that your joy may be full. And he went on to say, I am not going to appeal to the Father to answer your prayer. Why? Because the Father himself loves you. Because you believe in me. Do you know what that means? Is, can I ask you a question? Is God love? Has God ever been love? The Bible says God is love. Is he love? When did God become love? Was it when he created man? Because to love, you must have somebody you set your love on. So who did God first set his love on? Jesus. Jesus was the dearest of the father's heart. 
Jesus was loved beyond measure by the Father. That is why the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave. You did not know what God gave. God gave all of his heart to the world. That is why Romans chapter 8 verse 32 will say, If God spared not his only begotten son, but freely deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us how many things? How many things? All things. So for you to believe in Jesus, you have accepted the love of the Father. The love of the Father is on you. So Jesus said, I will not appeal to the Father on your behalf. Because the Father himself loves you because you believe in me. Then, in John chapter 14, from verse 12 to verse 14. Listen on. John chapter 16, let me show you something. John 16, 23. Very quickly. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Give us verse 13. John 14, 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do. Is it not a contradiction? In chapter 16, he said, you shall ask me nothing. In chapter 14, he said, whatsoever you ask in my name, not the Father, I will do it. What is the mystery? The mystery is that when you go in his name to cast out demon, Jesus endorses it. Do you hear what I'm saying? For the Bible says, he that believe in me, are surely, for sure, with guarantee, it is settled. Whosoever believe in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than that. Because I go to my father. You know why Jesus was excited to go to the father? So that he can multiply himself in us. You know why Jesus, the Holy Spirit is Jesus multiplied. Do you hear what I'm saying? So Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to multiply himself all over the world. So you are Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, if you believe in him. Say, if you believe in him. You are Jesus. You belong to him. He lives in you. And you are in him. And the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. How can you be one spirit with the Lord and the life of Jesus and the power of Jesus and the glory of Jesus does not flow through you? Impossible. So Jesus gave us his name to carry out transaction on his behalf. Tonight we will use that name. Now, so three person. To one person, anyone that lift up his hand, you are going to go three person to one person, laying upon the shoulder of the person. What are you going to do? Three things. One, don't ask God to heal the person. Two, don't say, oh God, oh God, oh God, you are wasting time. What are you doing? You are wasting time. God taught me to heal the sick without robbing him of his glory. If you are to heal one sickness and you remove coat and you are sweating, it shows you are the one doing it and the glory should come to you. But if you look at a woman like the one that came to my house, the sister happened to be a children pastor in the ministry and she had chronic peptic ulcer. And she was living in London when she came and spent some days with her sister. She started vomiting and they rushed her to the hospital. And the, hosp the doctor told her, you have chronic ulcer. And so she decided to shorten her days of staying in Nigeria to fly back to, America, to Britain where they have sophisticated equipment to handle her case. 
But the sister keep persuading her to come for me to minister to her. And she said to her sister, I don't believe in all those nonsense. The pastors can deceive you people, but not me. But the sister keep persuading her. So when they were taking her to the airport, the sister said, can we just branch to the pastor? Is that okay? Okay, so that you'll be happy. Let's go. And she walked into my parlor, bending down under a terrible, excruciating pain. And you know what she did, sir? When she sat down, she said to the sister, my flight, my flight, my flight. So I know if I was going to sing a chorus, it would be a waste of time. If I was going to worship, it would be a waste of time. If I want to preach to her, it would be a waste of time. I said to her, stand on your feet. I said to her, you are the one that need miracle. And you are talking about time, time, time. Stand on your feet. Let me show you the love of Jesus. And she stood up. Sir, in the medical science, there is radiation. My hand conduct radiation. So you know what I did? I simply did like this. I said, check your body, you are healed. And the woman checked, every pain has disappeared. Every sickness has left. She said, she cannot be true. It cannot be true. I said, it's true. The sister said, it's true. When you heal like that, you give the glory to God. Because it shows you are not the one doing it. It is his power that he has entrusted you with that has done it. Is somebody listening to me? Can I shock you? If you don't listen to what I say tonight, when people, when there is no hospital, when hospitals are shut down, when people are dying, we will miss the season of revival. Do you hear what I'm saying? But if you listen to me tonight and believe that the God that is in you can heal the sick, when you see the dead fall down, you will raise them up. People will gather, you will have enough altar to preach the gospel. Some of you want to preach here. No more time to preach here. The altar will be everywhere. The pulpit will be everywhere. God is going to make it available. In the next one, two, three years. Everywhere we will become the pulpit. Because when you begin to heal, people will look for Jesus. In the midst of this shaking, God wants to take glory for himself. So, lay hand upon the person and say, sickness, disease, infirmity. You talk to who? Sickness. You talk to, to, you, to sickness. Secondly, you talk to the body. So, you command the sickness, the disease, the plague, the infirmity, the affliction to leave that body. Secondly, you command the body to receive life. You transmit strength, power, health, soundness to that body. I wish your pastor, your pastor was here because I invited me to preach for, was it three days? The second day of the meeting, I decided to do emergency training on how to heal the sick. And I finished. And I said, I want people who has never healed the sick before, but you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, to come forward. And I call for sick people to come. And the first woman that came forward, her tummy was very big. And this side was hard as stone. She do like this, you will hear noise. And the sister was standing before me, and I know her heart was beating very fast. And I said, command that that stone, that, that stuff to dissolve and command the stomach to recede back. And she did. And instantly, the stomach receded back. I'm talking about your pastor. I'm not talking about somebody in America. The stomach receded back and the place that was stiff, the stiffness dissolved instantly. The place went wild. The third day, there was no space in the hall. Tonight, God will use you. It is time for the believers. The day we are living is called the days of the saints. No longer the God superstars. No longer the pastors, the apostles, and the prophets. We are living in the days of the saints. 
the saints will carry the healing mantle of Jesus Christ to the world to give hope to the hopeless. Are you hearing me? Are you ready? Command the body to be healed and then stop. Don't pray endless prayer. Stop and say, what happened to you? Check because sometimes when the person is here, you are still praying. The person is already here. You are still praying. Stop and ask if it is pain. Has the pain disappeared? Oh yeah, are we ready? If you are sick, lift up your hand. Any kind of sickness, lift up your hand. Any kind of sickness. The one I call, the one I did not call, lift up your hand. Stand on your feet, lift up your hand. If you cannot stand because of the condition, sit down. But lift up your hand for somebody to see. Three people to one person. Three people to one person. Do that very quickly. Spot out the person that is lifting up hand. Go three person to one person. If you are born again, three person to one person. Do that. Rabada de kototori la basanda. Ribaleke toko simbra bade kasota. Makuta kala sopra gada toteria. Ripakla kasatori kaparagase. Ribada de braba de ketoko shanda. I release power. I release healing grace. I release healing anointing upon you right now. Receive God's healing power. To heal the sick. Receive God's healing anointing. To heal the sick. I command every sickness. To, dis to obey you. I command every disease. To obey you. I command every infirmity. To obey you. In the name of Jesus. Make sure you stop and interview the person. Command the deaf ears to be open. Every deaf ears be open. Every blind eyes be open. Every barren womb be open. Every dumb tongue be loose. Every stammering stop and be corrected. I correct every impediment of the tongue. I command the lake that is crippled to be strengthened out. I command that fibro to disappear. I command the cancer to disappear. The breast cancer to disappear. The coiter to disappear. I command the tumor to disappear. I command the respiratory tract system to disappear. I command the stiffness of the leg, the stiffness of the hand to disappear. Every sickness, every disease, every plague, every infirmity, every affliction disappear, 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 disappear. Now, 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 power of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Lord, healing virtue, flow into those bodies, be healed now, be made whole now, be set free now, be loosened now, stop and interview. Hello, all of you stop and interview. Anybody that is healed should wave his hand. Anyone that has noticed the pain is completely gone, the disease has gone, lift up your hand and wave. Oh no, you don't get me, you don't get me. Please listen very carefully. If somebody has laid hand upon you and prayed and the sickness has disappeared, Lift up your hand and wave. The 
there is the sickness has disappeared you can give a testimony lift up your hand and wave are you seeing those hands are you seeing those hands give God all the glory give God all the praise give God all the worship give God all the honor may the almighty God equip you empower you strengthen you fortified you so that you can rise to the occasion that is at hand so that you can do what rise to the occasion that is at hand God bless you I say God bless you I say God bless you but I want to pray Sir, please come. Please come. Please come. Only please join me. My pastors that pray with me, please, can you come? Every man or woman hidden in this congregation that has troubled this house. Over the years. You are a witch. You are a wizard. You have been attacking this house. Your, your days are numbered. You will proceed no further. Listen to me. Anybody that is an instrument to kill anybody in this house in order to blackmail God's servant, you will not cross tonight. You will not cross tonight. You will not cross tonight. Lay your hand, two of your hand on my shoulders, two of my shoulders. Please lay hand upon him. Be connected to him. Listen, listen so that you know when to say amen. Eternal Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. Your servant has labored in this land. Your servant has honored you in this land. This land ought to recognize your servant. Anybody that is a member, anybody that was a member that left the ministry, whether a member or a pastor, that become an instrument of death to this house tonight, by apostolic mantle we judge you by corporate anointing we judge you we judge you this night will not spare you you will not cross over to tomorrow you will not see first October 2021 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that when there is no judgment, people do not learn righteousness. Tonight, we teach the witches and the wizards in this house, in this street, in this locality. Every witch, every wizard that tried to blackmail this house will take away your life. Will take away your life. Will terminate your life. And so you will not be alive to perpetuate your wickedness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every altar, every sanctum, every covenant that have been raised up against this ministry, every incantation, every pronouncement, every decree, every injunction against this house, tonight, tonight, we scatter those altars.
We scatter those altars. We scatter those covenants. We scatter those sanctum. We scatter them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pass a decree by this company of the prophet and the apostles and by the corporate house of God. We pass a decree. No, no more sudden death. No more untimely death in this house. The fear is broken. The fear is broken. The fear is broken. This church is a movement to liberate Africa and no power can stop it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout seven amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I want to I want to pray one more prayer, but I want you to take a sacrifice. Turn to somebody and say sacrifice. You will rush to the altar. I did something, Pastor May Nikan. Preach is my friend my closest friend. We fast and pray together almost all the time. When he called for the offering, the sacrifice that he called for, I was the first person to step out. I was waiting. That morning, I, I, I listened to a testimony on the net, on Facebook. Under the ministry of Shambak, somebody asked Shambak, what was the greatest miracle you have ever seen in life? Shambak said the greatest miracle he has ever seen in his life was a young child of about 8 years that was ill of 20 30, 36 or 38 sickness and diseases one child 8 years of age 38 sickness and diseases he said the mother brought the child to Shambak I mean to AA Aline's program. Day after day, and they did not call her name, so she was not able to bring out her child to be prayed for. Then, I think five days after, AA Aline came on board and said, I want a seed of faith. He said, give a seed that when you give, you know it takes faith to give this kind of seed. You know, there are seeds that takes faith to give. There are seeds you can give without feeling anything. But there are seeds when you give, it takes faith to give it. This woman had only $20 be left. And she has told Shambak that she was living in another city. And that this $20 dollar bill is the only thing left in her hand. She came lodged in a hotel and was eating eating and was attending the program and was sowing seed every night and the money exhausted remaining only 20 bill. When Shamba called out that seed you know what the woman did? She took off from the back with the child. She ran and beat everybody and was the first woman to drop the $20 bill in the basket. Shambak said where he was standing, he moved out to go and see what the woman put in the offering tray and discovered it was the $20 bill. 
Shambach said he wept tears came out of his eyes and he said to himself the woman has gotten a miracle tonight and that child was sealed of 30 something sickness and diseases that night the child was deaf blind, born blind born deaf, born dumb born crippled no private part the child has all kinds sickness and diseases but that night but that night but that night the woman was here that was why I listened to that message that morning so when pastor may make and call out for that offering I was I determined I was going to be the first to, to drop the offering tonight I wanted to take a seed of faith I didn't say offering. I say a seed of what? Faith. A seed that you know it takes faith to sow. Can I give you a testimony? I'm going to sow a seed of faith too. Can I give you a testimony? Years ago, because of fasting and praying, I'm praying so much in tongues. One day God visited me and put fire in my hand. Whenever I'm standing to minister to the sick, the fire will come upon my hand. And then I know that that sickness is gone. One day I shared an experience with somebody and the thing left. Oh, I was so sad. You don't share everything with everybody. So, I started fasting and praying for the thing to come back. Fasting did not bring it. Offering, I mean... Counseling. I went for counseling. I went for deliverance. I was still a young minister. I didn't know too much. One day, I attended a service, evening service, and the pastor said, take all the money that is in your pocket, give him the offering. And I was living, this was Enuku. I, my wife is a civil woman, so I'm your in-law. You have to treat me well. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I married and wedded in Enuku. And so I, I was living in Abakbanike while the service was at number two B Weary Road, Grace of God Mission. I was a pastor by that time. I took all the money, and that day, a brother blessed me with good money. Temptation, serious temptation. And on that fine day that I was blessed with good money, the pastor say, empty everything. How you are going to go back, I don't know, but empty everything. I will not say that tonight because I'm not led by the Lord. But the pastor said that. I carry all the money. As soon as I drop it in the offering trail, the fire was back on my hand. And ever since then, that fire has not left my hand. Somebody has just been healed of a heart condition. You have a long-standing heart condition. It has disappeared. Check, check, check. Your heart is gone. It's completely gone now. Just check. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Take a seed of faith and rush to the altar and drop it before I leave. Before I pray, one more prayer. Do that very quickly. God bless you. Sir, I'm sorry I took much time. I'm sorry, sir. Take a seed of faith. Come and drop on this altar. Do that very quickly. This is not your offering. This is a seed of faith. I'm going to speak to your life through this seed of faith. Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. Make it a seed of faith. Make it a seed of faith. Very quickly. 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 Do that sharply. Do that sharply. Do that sharply. Ha! 
Hayale bo se ya bra bra dia de se ke pro kada bene se noria ili bra ba de se ke tikla kabala koto bla ne se norinde ikapia ko poto mo zeri varianda e ka tuteri li ba ko sheri ala ba to ko zenderia ikateri kabo se bra mana ka to ri ala ba de de zendere ikala bra la bo ko to se ke ye ka da ke de ke de ke de zendere ikala bro to teri Jesus, you are the Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the Lord. I declare your lordship over your people. I declare your lordship over their houses. I declare your lordship over their businesses. I declare your lordship over their children. I declare your lordship over their marriages. Jesus Christ, you are the Lord. Lift up your hand. Stretch it forth towards this altar. You that is playing instrument, stretch forth your hand towards this altar so that you don't miss it. Listen and listen carefully. Father, from the inception of this altar, fasting and prayers have been conducted upon this altar. Worship has been carried out upon this altar. This altar is potent for miracle. I call for this altar that is connected to the golden altar in heaven to speak into the lives of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every altar contending with your finances. I command this altar. That is connected to the golden altar. To fight that altar. To fight that altar. To contend with that altar. To contend with that sanction. To contend with that covenant. In the name of Jesus. Every fasting and prayer, every worship that have been provoked from this altar, I transfer it into your life. For breakthrough, for open door, for divine connection, for divine favor, I speak in the next seven days. You will have a common connection in the next seven days. You will have a financial miracle Amen. that will turn your life around. Amen. I receive it all. Amen. Do you hear what I say? I receive it. I receive it. Sir, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Uncommon financial miracle. Uncommon financial connection. Uncommon financial favor from this altar that is potent with years of fasting, with years of prayers, with years of worship by all that has happened from the Lord upon this altar. I decree my prosperity. I decree and declare as I walk out tonight, I walk into my breakthrough. I walk into my favor. I walk into my honor. I walk into my connection. And I pray from tonight, your voice will be heard. Your voice will be heard. In your family, your voice will be heard. In your street, your voice will be heard. In your school, your voice will be heard. In your ministry, your voice will be heard. Sir, your voice will be heard. In Calabar, in Nigeria, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost.
the last prayer. Straight for your hand and pray for me. Uh -uh. Pray for me. 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 All about. follow you all over the world this healing grace this healing anointing upon your life shall go all over nigeria shall go all over africa shall go all over the world in the name of jesus the grace of god upon your life shall bless your church in the name of jesus the revival christ shall go through the body of christ all over the world in the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father, for you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen.